I figured I would take a break while I wait for my MRE to heat up and talk a little bit about the differences between VLF and pulse induction or PI metal detectors. So Josh and I tend to use PIs when we're out, but we both have VLF. So this is a VLF. This is the MindLab Equinox 800. Um, there's all kinds of VLFs. There's the newer Equinox, there's the Manticore, there's the Nocta Legend, the Garrett Storm, Vortrex, I don't know. There's, there's so many different VLFs that you can get. Um, it's a pretty saturated market. So VLF stands for very low frequency. What happens is there is a signal that goes into the ground. Both detectors send a signal into the ground and there's a transmit and receive coil. So the receive coil is able to kind of measure the difference between what it's getting for voltage and the transmit coil. And it's also VLFs are able to give you a phase reading or a target ID. Different manufacturers have a different term for it. Some call it a VDI, some call it a target ID. Basically, it gives you an idea of what the target could be with a very high margin of error. They're not foolproof. So like it might say it's iron, it, it could be gold. It might say it's silver and it could be iron. So it's really, especially with gold detecting, not 100%, but it gives you some idea, which unlike PIs, uh, PI detectors, this is a MindLab GPX 6000. So a pulse induction detector, some examples of these would be the GPX series. The GPZ 7000 is, is kind of a PI, I would categorize it in there, but it's really ZVT technology, which is a little bit different. Uh, Garrett Axiom, really solid PI, great price on that too. I actually wouldn't mind trying one out. Um, and the difference with these, these tend to be more geared towards prospecting. So they, they don't see target IDs at all, but they also don't see mineralization as bad as a VLF. A VLF in mineralized ground with a lot of iron or other minerals is going to squawk and sound off. The VLF is going to sound off on hot rocks, uh, ground changes. You know, if there's a lot of hematite or magnetite in, this, in the soil, it's going to sound off. The PI is able to see through that. Um, and the technology is more like a sonar, like it sends out a super high voltage pulse, and then it waits a really specified amount of time, and then it reads, and it just gives you a sound if there's a, a signal. And Josh and I talk about the differences in the sounds, like gold, smaller gold especially, tends to be a high low sound so it goes wee yo wee yo and iron tends to go the opposite way it'll go whoa wee whoa wee and you know bigger targets will have all kinds of weird things with the signal but you really have to hunt by ear with a pi with a vlf you can sort of hunt by the numbers uh, and cherry pick targets but if you do that when you're out looking for gold you're gonna be leaving a lot of gold in the ground. Uh, I found a pretty good amount of gold with this Equinox 800. I'd say if you're looking for a used one, you could probably get it for really cheap and it, it'll find you plenty of gold. Uh, the PIs tend to be a lot more expensive. Like VLFs used to be, you get them for 800 bucks. Now they're 1200 up. Um, some of them are cheaper. The ones that can do gold are gonna be more expensive because gold is worth more. The PIs tend to start at like 2,000 bucks and go up all the way to $10,000. So these, this is a much bigger investment. Uh, and if you're just starting out, I'd say start with the VLF, learn it. Learn how to hunt by ear with the VLF. Um, you can always check the targets with the discrimination or the numbers, but get used to hunting by ear because when you step up to the big boy, this is, you know, you're gonna be just listening to stuff. You're not gonna have any readouts. So that's kind of a brief overview of the difference between PI and VLF metal detectors. If you guys have any questions, just you know, post a comment and Josh or I can, can uh, try to answer them. So thanks for checking this out.